Welcome everyone. My name is Abby Lopez and I'm again with Dr. Jim Richards. Thank you so much for being with us. Yeah. I am glad to be here. I, I, I you know I love these I love these uh, interviews that you do. I think it gives us a chance. I always like to hear what the people ask, you know. I don't know what people need. But when they ask a question, mm -hmm. then that's important to them. So I, I love any kind of environment where people get to send in questions. Fantastic. Very good. So uh, let's maybe start. It's always interesting. Where are we going to start? I would love to take off from the point of uh, last session where we finished. We literally, it seemed like we ended in the middle because that's what people were saying. Hey, but where is next part? We gave him a, cliff, a cliffhanger. So exactly. come back. But it was like four cliffhangers. So oh, let's okay. with the first one. You were talking about Chinese medicine and how it sets our emotional and psycho status that they you said they actually that they actually test and get to the bottom of people's stomach condition when they struggle with mental issues. Talk about this. Well, first of all, let me, let me say this. There there is a reason that I study Chinese medicine. Mm -hmm. Here's something that you you almost can't find this out. I mean, I, I, but I'll jump back. You know, when I when I was in when I was doing my getting my bachelor's degree, uh, we had a health and healing class in our Bible college, mm -hmm. and so it was so funny because the guy that was going to preach it, the teacher was so lame. I mean, it was just it was just going to be your typical name it and claim it and a bunch of nonsensical kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the Bible is very practical. Everything that God gives us to do it, it is, it, it, if it's, if it's mystical, if you're making it mystical, mm -hmm. you're probably jumping off the, the bridge or something. Oh, so okay. anyhow, right before this guy was supposed to teach his class on health and healing, he got sick and couldn't preach it. Couldn't teach oh. it. <laughs> so <laughs> the guy that they sent in was very yeah. knowledgeable, mm -hmm. you know, about dietary things. And I'll tell you, this was, this was such an important turn in my life because, uh, I, you know, at that time I hadn't been saved, but maybe, um, uh, maybe three and a half years. And so I was still just, you know, digging through the Bible for myself, you know? Mm -hmm. And so this was, this was when I, I had a paradigm shift. I'm telling you has changed everything that I understand when I read the Bible. See, we read the Bible, and for example, anything that's in the law and the commandments, mm -hmm. we read that, and we think that everything that God said has to do with spiritual righteousness. Yes. Oh, yeah, we do. Now, you know, the, the, the Ten Commandments, eight of the Ten Commandments are about how we treat each other and how we treat ourselves, and only two of them mm -hmm. are about how we treat God. Wow. Now, so when the children of Israel came into the promised land, mm -hmm. now, instead of just having the commandments that you that you're applying to yourself, mm -hmm. you know, your relationship with God, you're walking in. And by the way, those eight, all of the Ten Commandments were about this is what it looks like if you walk in love, mm -hmm. love toward God, love toward people and love toward yourself. And those those are the three categories of love mm -hmm. that that come first, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mouth, love your neighbor as yourself. Yes. And so if you're not having love in all three of those areas, it, it never works. It's always, there's going to be something sick and twisted. But anyhow, mm -hmm. so when the children of Israel came into the promised land, now they were, they had become a nation. So they needed to understand civil law. Mm -hmm. And, and so there were, 613 commandments that were given to the children of Israel. And every one of those commandments can be traced back to one of the 10 commandments. Mm -hmm. So yes. it's divided into 10 categories. So that means that out of those 613 commandments, uh, uh, that means 500 and something of those commandments were all about how to treat each other. Mm -hmm. How about yourself. how many are talking about how to treat myself? Well, that would be, I'm, I'm including those 80% would be about how to treat each other and, and, and treat each other in a way mm -hmm. that I come out to, you know, it's yeah. a win-win. God yeah. wins, people win, I win. Okay. So mm -hmm. now I will just throw this out just so you'll know. 
anywhere in the Bible that it speaks negatively of the law, mm -hmm. it is not talking about the law of Moses. It's talking about the Talmud of, and the Mishnah. And the Jews came in when they were in Babylonian captivity and they wrote the Babylonian Talmud. And they, and they said, look, they, they created what's called fence laws. Mm -hmm. So in a Jewish community, you build a house, your porch is on the roof. Mm -hmm. You don't go out and sit in front of your house. So like in the evening when people are eating with their families, uh, if, you know, if they were financially able, they had a house that they had built, you know, built that was capable of mm -hmm. having a, 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 an area on, on the very top. And so the, the Pharisees, you know, came along and said, well, wait a minute. The Bible doesn't tell you you should have a safety fence around that house to keep people mm -hmm. falling off your roof. But they said, but you know, if people fall off your roof, you're guilty. It's your fault. See, this is, this is really interesting because this is where one of the first places that we see socialism coming into Judaism, because mm -hmm. in, in by doing that, they were saying that if somebody got up there and got drunk and acted like a fool, mm -hmm. it's not their fault. It's your fault. And so, uh, and so you, they said, so you got to have a fence around your roof so that nobody can fall off. So then from that, they kind of launched off into what they call fence laws. So a fence law would be like this. If you see a sign over there that says, don't step on the grass, then the Pharisees kind of said, well, wait a minute. That sign might not be enough to stop you. So we need another law or another commandment that's sort of like a fence that's a little stricter, it's a little harsher, and it keeps you from actually getting over to that sign so that you could step on the grass. So they then created, there's a, I've heard a lot of debate about this. They, they created between five and 6,000 fence laws. So that is crazy. Tell me who created these laws? Because they said those are God's laws. Did God create these laws or them? Well, no, it was it was them. I mean, God God gave Moses. And remember, the word law means a signpost. Uh -huh. The mm -hmm. word commandment means yep. a prescription. Mm -hmm. So it was never meant to be legalistic okay. at all. All right. And, and so, uh, mm -hmm. so they came up with five, six thousand new laws. So anytime the Bible speaks negatively about the law, yeah, it is mm -hmm. actually, and in the language. In the original language, you can see this is actually talking about all of these fence laws uh, that the that the Pharisees created. Uh, it, it, somebody asked me an interesting question. What was can you name something good about legalism? One thing, because we no, always hear from the negative side. But there oh. is nothing good about legalism because legalism mm -hmm. is think about the fence law, the fence law, the, the, the law that said don't step on the grass. Mm -hmm. If in your heart you honored God and you mm -hmm. honored the, the fact that the, this grass belonged to somebody else, mm -hmm. if you had, in other words, if you had value for God, value for people, yeah. th then you just wouldn't step on the grass. Mm -hmm. But so really what the Pharisees are saying, the way God set this up to work, which is to have love in your heart for one mm -hmm. another, is not enough. We got to have stricter laws and we got to have stricter punishment. Mm. And so really this made it where the people never tried to know God in their heart. They never tried to walk in love, you know, yeah. and honor yeah. one another. Yeah. They just tried to obey the rules yeah. to avoid punishment. So it was, wow. wow. It was nothing about value, nothing about law. Yeah. So jumping back to the laws and the commandments that God actually gave mm -hmm. you and, and you not anything out of the Talmud, not anything out of the, out of the Mishnah, not anything out of these other Jewish uh, writings. So <clears throat> you start realizing in God's commandments, mm -hmm. there are categories. Mm -hmm. Now see to the Jews, every mm -hmm. law and commandment they made up was a way to earn righteousness. Right, right. But to God, mm -hmm. there was there's dietary laws. Now, dietary laws don't make you any more righteous. Mm -hmm. They just make you healthy. 
there were financial laws. Financial laws, they give you a good economy. I, you know what I mean? They, they protect the poor yes. and, uh, and, they, and they limit the wealthy if you, under, yes. if you understand them. So, so you start, and then, then there's, there's marriage and relationship laws. Relational, right, right. Mm -hmm. there's, and there's, you know, how to raise your children law. I mean, you know what I mean? So there's categories. Yes. And you start recognizing all of these different categories mm -hmm. tell me how to have wisdom yeah. and how to either express God's love for myself or for yeah. other people. Mm -hmm. And so, so it was in this class was the first time I understood that the, that all the law and the commandments are broken down into categories. Mm -hmm. And there's a, there's a, you know, there's 20% of them will have to do with how to relate to God. 80% okay. of them will have to do with either finances, mm -hmm. food, you know, all of these practical things uh, that tells me how to take care of myself and how to take care of my neighbor. Hmm. So, so good. And I, you know, we have to do that introduction or else people still won't understand where we're coming from. Absolutely. It's not foundation. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I was taking this health and healing class and this guy was really big on nutrition. I remember this is in the early seventies and man, there weren't health food stores on every corner and you couldn't find organic food anywhere. Because food was healthier, wasn't it? Well, it was healthier, but because nobody was educated, the government, we didn't know that the government was giving people license to poison us. <laughs> mm, back then even? Was oh yeah. Oh yeah. This has been, this has been going on forever. I mean, at least back to the 50s that I can recall. You see, in Poland, where I grew up, was different. I grew yeah. up on natural food. It, yeah. was, it was after I actually left maybe 20 years ago when the, all this industry, food industry came to us. Well, you know, almost all, every other country uh, protects their food mm. more than the United States. Oh, uh, it, it's worse here because, because of the greed. It's just, you know, it's just greed and all that kind of stuff. But anyhow... Whoa, so, whoa. so I studied, I set out to study yeah. nutrition based on what the Bible said, you know, eat these foods, don't eat these foods. And so I learned a lot about nutrition, but the problem was you couldn't, you couldn't get these foods or you couldn't get them organic and that sort of stuff. So it, it was, it was sort of like you couldn't really go to a restaurant and eat. You couldn't take your family out there. You know what I mean? You couldn't go anywhere and eat anything that was fit to eat. And so, so then you start turning that into a spiritual thing and you get condemned because you're eating food that you know you should eat. Right. So anyhow, long short of it. Uh, so then I started learning about, uh, I believe it was homeopathy next. Now, mm -hmm. homeopathy is a very good therapy. You know, I, got a, I got a letter, an email from somebody just the other day. And this precious woman, uh, she's about to retire. She's a veterinarian. Mm -hmm. And she's about to retire from, you know, from a, a, an allopathic veterinarian practice. Mm -hmm. And, and she wants to go to school for homeopathy and start using that on animals, which is mm -hmm. very effective on animals. And, mm -hmm. of course, people are beating her up and making her believe that she's doing something that's of the devil. Uh, because, yeah, see, most people, particularly in America, America thinks if something comes out of America is of God. Mm. <laughs> no, really. But if it comes out of Europe or China or Japan, that makes it of the devil. Or Africa. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. And so I, I talk to people all the time about this because I, so many people, they, they're just so beat up, you know, you know. So anyhow. Uh, Terrible. So. You start realizing, and particularly in this day and age, we know a lot more, we have better science. And, and so we, we realize that God gave us wisdom mm -hmm. about how to maintain good health. Yes. And so, and so all of the foods that he tells us to eat and not to eat mm -hmm. really has, it's not about any great spiritual Mm -mm. you know concept it doesn't make god love us more it doesn't make us have better faith mm -hmm. it just it just puts us where we are natural beings mm -hmm. in a natural world that god created and we eat the kind of food that keeps his natural body in his natural environment healthy in a natural way mm -hmm. does that make sense yeah absolutely mm -hmm. 
Yes, so, we, um, oh. so the, the, you know, all of the unclean foods have value in planet Earth or they wouldn't be here. There's usually they're scavengers and help help eliminate the things that we need to eliminate in, in the planet and bottom of the ocean and everything. But uh, so many studies now reveal that they are very detrimental to your health. I, I think I used the example uh, 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 Dr. Reams, R-E-A-M-S, Dr. Reams, uh, who was a genius. I mean, th th he was incredible. You know, he discovered through his research that mm -hmm. when, at least through pork and maybe through some other unclean foods, that it affects the way your cells can communicate with each other. Yes, yes, yes. You spoke about that. Yeah. And so when your cells cannot communicate with each other, that's like having a, a car that you know, it's a, it's a six cylinder and three of the spark plugs don't work. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so now it can't send, the, it can't send the signals all over the automobile to make it, to make it run properly. Mm -hmm. So for me, eating healthy mm -hmm. is just really about how long I want to live yeah. and, and, and how really how, how easy I want my life to be. And do I want the energy? Cause when you don't have energy, you're not productive. Mm -hmm. Well, not only you're not productive, but basically your life is ending. You're dying. Any day you get up and you don't have energy, you're losing what it takes to keep you alive. Because you you don't give your the chance of your growth hormone right. to work. So yeah. I studied nutrition. I studied homeopathy. Mm -hmm. I studied a couple of other things. And so uh, <clears throat> I... Uh, the first time I suffered from chronic fatigue, you know, because of a, a lot of the things I went through when I was young, mm -hmm. you know, I always was just kind of on the edge of not having good energy. But then, then I would go off on these mission trips and man, mm -hmm. I would come back with parasites and infections and, and, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. nearly yeah. die. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And yep. so, um, man, I, the first time I had chronic fatigue was, I was in my thirties. And, and I'm telling you, it, I would go to my office every day. I would work. And then I would, I would lay on the floor yeah. and, and on my back. And I put my feet against the door so nobody could come in. Because I, you know, I, I wasn't telling people I had chronic fatigue. I, I just thought, I don't do that. You know, if I'm dealing with something, I don't talk to people about it till it's over. Uh -huh. And so, uh, so that way, if somebody wanted to come in, they'd try to open the door. If I was taking a little nap, it'd wake me up. So it, it, you know, it would be like every hour or two, I would have to take a little power nap. Yeah. Or I would never make it through the day. Whoa. So um, there was a there was a Chinese guy in my church, mm -hmm. and uh, he and I talked about it. And he said, "You know, Jim," he says, "There's an exercise that so many Christians think is demonic." And he said, "It's not. It's just exercise." And he says, um, "He says, I think if you would learn this, it's a Chinese exercise." He said, "I think if you'd learn this, this would help you." Mm -hmm. and we talked about some other exercises he says do not do not do these other exercises don't do these exercises where you're lifting weights and pushing yourself hard and all that kind of stuff he says because if you do with your when your energy is already low you're going to consume the energy your body needs to stay alive and you're going to get worse mm -hmm. and that's what had been happening to me i was work i was trying to work out i was trying to do everything that western medicine says you should do so working out doesn't help you produce more energy? Uh, only if it's done in moderation and, and kind of done intelligently. And we, we can get into that if you want to at some point in this conversation. Are you going to tell us? No, 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 no. We don't need to. Are you going to tell us what kind of exercise he gave you? Uh, it's called Tai Chi. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Chi, a lot of people flip out over the word Chi, but Chi just <laughs> means energy. Mm -hmm. that's it and that's all it's just a chinese word for energy but see remember mm -hmm. most christians if it's not a, if it's not in their home language then it's of the devil because they think yeah it, other pe cultures are like an aliens we treat them right. like demons so <laughs> it turned true. out that one of the best tai chi teachers in the world mm -hmm. was right here in huntsville alabama wow and so i went down and oh, introduced wonder. myself to him we became friends mm -hmm. and so i started studying under him yeah. so i didn't just study i thought i got i got to understand the science behind this i've got to understand i don't want to know, just know what to do i want to know why it works 
Therefore, mm -hmm. I can make it better. Yeah. So when I started studying uh, Chinese medicine, I, it was like, man, I kept finding all these things that were completely mm -hmm. in harmony with mm -hmm. the Bible. It was more biblical than nutrition. It was more biblical than homeopathy. And, and I'm, I'm not against those things. I'm just saying it was more biblical than what was being taught in America. I mean, you could just go, it was more biblical than, than Western exercise that they teach you to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I thought, I thought, man, there's something missing here. If people think this is of the devil, they're idiots because uh, there, there's nothing about the devil in here. Like you always say, the degree of our understanding will come with the degree of obedience. But yeah. if our hearts are closed, if we already condemn someone or some yeah. culture, we will never learn nothing. God cannot reveal to us nothing. No, exactly. So, um, so I started studying mm -hmm. Chinese medicine. Mm -hmm. And uh, I first got uh, uh, my certification mm -hmm. uh, in herbology. Now, in the medicine, uh, studying this medicine, you know, I would get training that I would have to go through clinical trials. Mm -hmm. In other words, I had to experiment on people and work up case studies for them and, you know, come in, you know, come in, get all their symptoms, what was wrong with them, how they had been diagnosed in Western medicine. And then I would have to track what happened. Was I getting good results? Okay. Well, I'm telling you, I had about, I, I, in my first clinical trial, I had 10 or 20 people who had all been suffering with chronic illnesses for years. Hmm. And, you know, the only reason they let me experiment on them because I was their last hope. They had tried, you know, they had tried Western medicine. They had tried all kinds of stuff. But anyhow, so uh, the amazing thing was hmm. within 90 days, about 80% of them were completely well. Hmm. I'm thinking, okay, wait a minute. And so, <laughs> you know, so yes. I, I remember just thinking, there's so many biblical principles in this that I, I've got to, I've got to get to the root of it. Mm -hmm. So eventually I ran across, Oh, by the way. So the next step was, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've always worked with drug addicts. So the next step was, I, it turned out in New York city, uh, in the Bronx, mm -hmm. uh, at Lincoln hospital, there was a special program, uh, for substance abusers, mm -hmm. uh, where they use Chinese medicine. And so I called New York, got in touch with the guy. They weren't going to let me in because they only let doctors in. And so I told the guy, I said, let me tell you something. The church has been working with drug addicts before Western medicine ever even thought to work with drug addicts. Okay. And I told him, I said, if you want, if you want to really help more drug addicts than you could ever, ever help, Mm -hmm. You let me get trained. Let me get certified. I'll start training pastors all over the world. Whoa. And we'll, we'll be touching thousands and thousands or maybe millions more people than you can ever touch by doing this through the hospitals. And so uh, I went up and they accepted me into their program and I trained there at Lincoln hospital. And so sure enough, you know, I, I got, I, I not only got certified in the program, but I got certified as a trainer. Oh, okay. And so I came back and, and developed a program just for churches, just for, just for believers. And, and really, I, I, you know, I just took biblical principles and said, now, here's, the, here's what the Bible says about this. Here is what the Chinese medicine says about it. And they were just almost exact. You know what I mean? So anyhow, if, if some off, go ahead, I'm sorry. If, no, if, if question from listeners, I bet there's going to be someone. So where can I find your study? Do you have any anywhere documented or can I? We are in the process. Mm -hmm. We had all of this, all of my training online. We have no idea what happened to it. And so we are trying to find the original videos where I did this training. And, uh, you know, that stuff just happens, you know, with stuff that you have online. I mean, you don't know what happens to it, you know, where it goes. And uh, But anyhow, we're trying to recover all of that training. Mm -hmm. uh, because for years mm -hmm. I, I i would do seminars in house and we would have you know 50 or 60 right. pastors here and teach them and really? you know, work with them and train them and uh now you know then we got to where we would just send out the videos to the churches and then we would consult with them and uh so so we actually want to get back into doing that so here's here's what i started mm -hmm. realizing 
the Chinese people historically, mm -hmm. not only were they more in line with the Bible than any other culture in the world, mm -hmm. as it turns out, uh, but they actually believed the Bible. They believed the biblical creation account. And in their ancient language, mm -hmm. you know, when you look up their ancient language about creation, it comes straight out of the Bible. Yes. I mean, they even have, you know, they have a word in Chinese mm -hmm. that uh, means the same thing the Logos means in Greek, and they know that it's about the Savior. Wow. So, yes, the, yes. Uh, the Chinese worship the God of the Bible mm -hmm. up until I think it was, a, I, could, I, I could be getting these dates wrong, but I think it was like in maybe, um, maybe six or 700 BC. Okay. And mm -hmm. so, uh, uh a particular king came to power or emperor came to power that brought and, Buddha. Mm -hmm. yeah he, that brought paganism to paganism. China. all kinds of guys and so they got into all kinds of idolatry well the people rose up and killed him oh man killed him okay killed him uh -huh. they were not going they were not going to be idolaters oh, but then his son came to power yeah. oh. so then when his son came to power he's like i'm gonna get even with all of you and so his son was the one that mm -hmm. opened the borders to the Buddhist from mm -hmm. India. And there was an influx of Buddhism from, from India. So when, when the Buddhists came in, mm -hmm. they found all of these scientific and medical texts that were completely in harmony with the Bible. Yeah. And they translated them mm -hmm. and changed them. Jeez. And they, they made it sound like all of this stuff was Buddhist thought. It wasn't Buddhist thought. Mm -hmm. It was people who knew who God was. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and so the problem with that was then over, you know, over a, a couple thousand years, the culture came to believe the Chinese culture came to believe that all this was Buddhist thought, but it's not It's biblical thought. And by the way, right. uh, I might be able to find the book and, and share that with you. But the long and the short of it is, uh, so I wanted, so when I was looking for what kind of medicine I was going to practice, mm -hmm. I, I had a criteria. I, right. said, you know, I said, number one, it has to be in harmony with how God created man and our universe. Mm -hmm. Because we're supposed to, our health is supposed to, it's supposed to be uniquely programmed that it only works here. It can't work. There's not another planet, all the universe. I don't care what anybody tells you. And by the way, this is scientifically, they all know this. They just yeah. don't want to admit it. Yes. There is not a planet on earth that man can live on other than, earth. I mean, a planet in the universe other than here. What? How about Mars? <laughs> How about uh, Mars? That's, that's, that's a man. You know, <laughs> the reason people keep looking at Mars, number one, yes. is because in uh, in paganism, mm -hmm. Mars uh, was considered kind of a a place of other you know, other gods mm -hmm. that came from. Now, something that very very few people know it's not taught in universities anymore, secular universities. But see, Mars mm -hmm. it was about every seven hundred years. I may be getting it wrong. Mars would come so close to planet Earth. Mm -hmm. that it would cause tidal waves earthquakes uh, you know and, and so so in our orbits we would we would do like that you know what i mean mm -hmm. and so mars became an occult concept and and, and you know there, there are certain deities that mm -hmm. are named after mars after the planet Mars is just in different languages. It you know, doesn't say Mars like it does in English, mm -hmm. but uh, many of your pagan deities are connected to Mars. So the real truth is our countries mm -hmm. would give anything to disprove the Bible. And the, the true thing behind space exploration is we will spend trillions and trillions of dollars right. looking all over the universe, mm -hmm. even though we have proof that, there, that we can't live anywhere else in the universe. We're going to spend trillions and trillions of your tax dollars trying to find a way to prove that the Bible is not true. So you live in Alabama, very yep. close. Well, this is the place where the space um, 
Technology. Right. This is this is the home of NASA. The home of NASA. Have mm -hmm. you ever spoke with one of them about what? Oh yeah. Right now. So what do I, they say? Do they do you sound insane to them, or do some agree? Well, the only ones I sound insane to are the ones who are pagans, who are atheists, and they they're not interested in looking at the science. They they just have an opinion, and they have no science to back it up. And when when we can back up science that supports the Bible, they just say, no, 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 no. So they're going to spend their whole life trying to find out or prove that we, there is life elsewhere outside of Earth. Right. Or you, that we can live there yep. just, just to end this life knowing it's impossible. Well, I mean, you know, and that's what the book of Romans says. It says they are willfully ignorant. Ignorant. They mm -hmm. know, but they choose to, to not just deceive themselves they won't mm -hmm. deceive the world because you know you know people don't understand i i, I get so frustrated with this believers mm -hmm. see the believers idea of the battle that's going on between mankind and the devil they come up with these goofy we're going to scream at the devil out in outer space you know what i mean we're going to do all this goofy stuff no it's it's in secular humanism mm -hmm. everything that pretty much is taught in our schools mm -hmm. and our universities and our medical studies all of the research they start from a they uh, they always start from a position that says we don't believe the bible we don't believe in god we don't believe any of that so now let's come up with some way to explain what we don't understand could you define for me uh, what do you mean by willfully ignorant well willfully ignorant is when a person chooses to believe something uh, with absolutely no facts, no science or anything to support it, but they will, they choose to say, no, but I'm not gonna believe that. So then in other words, I'm gonna become ignorant because I don't wanna believe something that has already been proven to be true. Okay, so there is no will of proving God is wrong. It's just ignorance. Uh, but, but it's willful ignorance. See, it's not the kind of ignorance that says, I, I don't know the truth. Every, here's an interesting thing. Mm -hmm. Everything that we have been taught about, um, let me think of the word, uh, uh, astronomy, mm -hmm. uh, it is, every bit of it is built on a, on a corrupt and false science. Because when they look out into the universe mm -hmm. and they're trying to explain how the universe <laughs> Oops, explain how the universe works. They are starting with a premise that says that gravity mm -hmm. is the main thing that's affecting the movements of the planets and how they interact with each other. Listen, scientifically, we have known probably for maybe a hundred years that there is no gravity in outer space, it's magnetism. But they are not going to change the textbooks. Textbooks. They are not going to change because they choose to be ignorant. That's like that's like that's like going to the first grade and your teacher says two plus two equals four, <laughs> and you know some smart out little kid goes, no, I don't. <laughs> uh, yes, it does. You know, it's all two plus two is always equal four. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm I'm smarter than you are. I mean, I know I'm only six years old, but I'm smarter than you are. Uh -huh. And I'll two prove it doesn't equal four. I, I might not know what it equals, but it doesn't equal four. That's willful ignorance. That's pride. <laughs> that's arrogance. Uh, and so that's where the world is. And people don't believe that. People do not believe mm -hmm. how willfully wicked mm -hmm. the world is. And that all of this stuff is designed to alienate us from God. Mm -hmm. It's not accidental. It is designed so that we will not know God. Maranatha, Lord Jesus, come. We just want, you know, I, I've got a lot of friends that are scientists that, mm -hmm. you know, I've had, you know, when I, when I had a local congregation here, man, my church was, had several scientists in it. And that meant that if I said anything that I could not prove scientifically and biblically, they would wait. I'd have a, I'd have a bunch of people sitting in my office next week. <laughs> so all the science stuff that I write in these books, yeah, I would share it with these scientists. Like, Am I crazy or what? <laughs> You better watch what you say. No way. But anyhow, so you know, I said the first thing I said is any medicine that I learned, it has to be in harmony mm -hmm. with how God created us. It doesn't have to be word for word in the Bible. That's not the point. It's about it's about being in harmony 
mm-hmm. with the Bible, it being in harmony with how mm-hmm. we're created. Then the second thing was when I studied homeopathy, nutrition, and whatever, all, I can't even remember all those different therapies I studied. I real I found that that like I said, it was like you, you can't do this and live on planet Earth. You can't yeah. do this. You're making this so difficult. So the second thing is it has to fit into a real life. Because one of the things that we that they teach us in Chinese medicine, which is a biblical concept, is mm-hmm. people will only continue to do that which fits into real life. If it's too much of an inconvenience, they might do it for a little while, but they're gonna quit. Mm-hmm. And see, that, that's one of the reasons a lot of the stuff that churches teach doesn't work. Because what you can't about, do it in real life. What about legalists or people who are who live in fear? I better continue to do what I'm taught, even though it doesn't make sense to me. Yep. I'm taught this way. I, I'm afraid of getting outside of my, of my box. Well, they do the same thing. They just have ways to always justify changing their version of what they're doing. They're not really staying true to anything that they teach. You know, Jesus said this, you know, in John, I don't know, I don't don't remember if it's John, I don't know, between nine and 11, I can't remember. He says, look, he says, you break the law. He tells the Pharisees, you break the law all the time. Like, no, we don't. And he says, okay, let me ask something. Mm -hmm. I'm paraphrasing. So he says, let let me ask something. So if you're telling me that if a child is born and and the day that, the law says that he has to be circumcised falls on the Sabbath. What do you do? Mm-hmm. But we circumcise him because we obey the law of Moses. He said, well, wait a minute. I just healed somebody mm-hmm. on the Sabbath. You want to kill me for that because you say I'm breaking the law of, Mo- of Moses for healing somebody. Mm-hmm. And he said, but yet you're going to circumcise your kid on the Sabbath. And he said, so, so you, know, you can't have it both ways. It was John 7, 19. You right? Right? Mm-hmm. So, you right? Know, so see, we read the Bible in such mystical, unpractical ways. We don't really pay attention to what's being said and what the argument is. We but don't. it's all it's all there. But mm-hmm. so the second thing is this is this has got to be able to work in real life. Mm-hmm. And the third thing was, um, uh, I want to be able to get diagnosis that gives me a uh, a plan. Mm-hmm. that I can get predictable results from because alternative medicine, even to this day mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. is actually pretty good at diagnosing things. Now they don't diagnose diseases and label them what Western medicine, but you, you know what iridology is where they look at your, at your eyes and yes. they can tell from your eyes yes. if you've got kidney problems or whatever, because there's discoloration in your eyes. And so they're great at diagnosing but they never get they never get consistent predictable results wow and you know and so when people would come into my clinic Mm -hmm. i could usually tell them by the second or third treatment i could i could say this isn't going to work or it is going to work or here's how it's going to work wow so i got incredibly predictable results wow that that was the third thing go ahead did you learn uh, from Chinese medicine how to read about your health condition based on your hand or your feet? Well, in, in Chinese medicine, we realize that the body is a whole. Mm-hmm. Everything is connected to everything. Absolutely. See, in, in Western medicine, it's like, okay, so I'm going to treat your heart. And you're like, well, wait a minute. The way you're treating my heart is going gonna, is gonna to kill my digestion. Right, right. Well, mm-hmm. we'll give you a pill for that. <laughs> yeah, but now, now that you're giving me a pill for my digestion, and that, give me that five, pill is affecting my kidneys. And we'll five, give you another pill for that. <laughs> five other side effects, yes. <laughs> right. So, um, but uh, see, holistic medicine mm-hmm. is not that terminology. Most people don't understand that terminology. Holistic medicine says treat the body as a whole. As a whole. Don't destroy. Don't heal one thing destroying another. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, mm-hmm. and so, for example, mm-hmm. in science and in medicine, there is a concept called the microcosm, macrocosm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like in the universe, you know, the universe is a macrocosm. It's, the macro is all about, about the big, 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 big. big yes, big. yes, yes. But macro is about mm-hmm. the smallest, smallest, smallest. But when you see, when you study science and health the way 
Western medicine teaches it, you can't use that philosophy because they don't believe that, like, you know, it, it, let's say, for example, you got inflammation in your pancreas, which is incredibly painful. They're never going to try to fix your pancreas because they're just going to take it out. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to ignore all yes. of the other organs that are affected by that. Mm -hmm. So the, the principle of macro, micro says this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it says that the body as a whole or the universe as a whole, the, the, the largest aspect of any part of creation functions identically to the smallest parts. In other words, an individual cell yeah. works by the same principles as the whole body. So that's why you, you spoke about you can reveal a health condition based on your tongue. That yep. shows you your ears, sometimes your eyes. Of course, yep. here we can see what's happening. And mm -hmm. so everything, your eyeballs, because it reveals yep. part of your... Your mm -hmm. face is a microcosm. In other exactly. words, I can tell something about every organ in your body by the discolorations in your face or where you have pimples or that kind of stuff. Your ears are a microcosm. Wow. Uh, and and so, so you can treat every organ in the body from the face yes. or from the ears. Mm -hmm. Or from the palms of the hand, or you know, from the hands, right. or from the bottom of the feet. Mm -hmm. Every, every, I don't know, I don't really, really remember your scalp. I don't remember how many uh, microcosm mm -hmm. there are in the body. Uh -huh. but there's several. Yes, 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 yes. And the more of them that you know, yes. like if somebody would come into me and they, <laughs> and they were sick, and so, so you know, first thing I do is I'd, I'd get a list of their symptoms. Yeah, I, you know, I'd find out everything, and, and I'd find out also see the macrocosm microcosm says because you are a part of this universe, mm -hmm. how and when your body does things mm -hmm. is an exact harmony with the 24 hour day. Like, I know if a person comes in and says, You know what, Jim, I every yeah. day at about, about uh, you know, about 11 o'clock, mm -hmm. I start feeling bad. Well, I'm, I know which which organ is active at 11 o'clock. Wow. The person comes in and says, you know, every day about, about like for years, every day, mm -hmm. I don't know how many times I was told over the last, my whole lifetime. I mean, I don't know how many times I was told your kidneys are failing. This is it. I mean, I, I've, I've had doctors tell me that more times than you can imagine. Or you're dying. But, <laughs> nice suggestion. But yeah, because uh, when your kidneys fail, that's it. You're, you're either going <laughs> lifetime dialysis, which doesn't your lifetime doesn't last very long. But here's the thing I know. From mm -hmm. about 5 o'clock until 7 o'clock is when all the energy starts coming into the bladder and, 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 and into the kidneys. Mm -hmm. And so that was the time of day I felt best. It's like, you can't, you'll never convince me my kidneys are failing yeah. when during the time of day, that the energy is going to the bladder and the kidneys, that's mm -hmm. when I feel best. So, you know, I never would say it to the doctors, but I'd just say, you ain't getting this right. And so I never would let them treat me. And I would always find my own way and, and, and I would solve it. Uh, <laughs> so so mm -hmm. one of the things I wanted to do for, in the ministry, you know, I want a holistic ministry. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to help you spiritually. I want to be able to help you emotionally, which is your soul. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to help you physically. That's your body. that's holistic medicine mm -hmm. because spirit, soul, and body are all connected together. Mm -hmm. And if you don't fix every part, yeah, then yeah. even if you get them feeling better, the disease always comes back. So you know, I had these I had these priorities uh, about about this. You know, first and foremost, it has to be in harmony with how God created us. Mm -hmm. And so. Uh, uh, when I, look, when I look at a lot of things, for example, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, here's, a good, here's a good example. And uh, that shows you how in harmony Chinese medicine is with, uh, you know, with the Bible. And by the way, this doesn't mean mm -hmm. I listen to the Chinese to understand anything about God. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't go to the Chinese medicine and say, okay, here's the medicine. Now I got to try to find some way to find this in the word of God. Mm -hmm. No, I always start with the word of God mm -hmm. and then look at everything else. So, but here, here's an example. Cool. In, in Chinese medicine, one of the things that we teach, again, this is a microcosm, macrocosm, holistic kind of concept. And we know this, 
we know that every organ in your body actually stimulates good or bad certain emotions and you know you know the the, the group i used to work with we would go into prisons mm-hmm. and we'd say put us in you know put our guys in the place where you have the most fights <laughs> and and we knew that people who are angry the most always have liver problems always mm-hmm. whoa and so we could go we could send a group in mm-hmm. uh into the prisons do an experiment so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna go i want you to go into this particular segment of the population mm-hmm. and all you i want you to do is treat their liver as it i don't want you to treat anything else liver oh. and the the number of fights and murders and violence would just go down drastically within just a few weeks oh, wow. because suddenly they didn't feel angry all the time mm-hmm. but let me give you a, a couple of biblical concepts on that you know your kidneys we know that if there's something derogatory with your kidneys, that if your kidneys are dysfunctioning, they tend to produce fear mm-hmm. more than anything else. Oh, yes, yes. And another interesting thing about the kidneys is the kidneys control a certain aspect of your willpower. Will- and so when people's, you know, a buddy of mine not too long ago, man, he was, I mean, great minister great friend you know you know he had no reason to be depressed or about his ministry and so one of his kids called me and said jim you got to help dad he, he is you know he he's in the hospital he's depressed he's frustrated with ministry and uh, so i just you know i prayed for a little while called him up mm-hmm. and so i started talking to him i said so tell me tell me what's going on so he told me i said okay i said don't tell me anything else i don't i'm gonna i'm gonna tell you what you're feeling I said, you're feeling incredibly discouraged. You feel like there's a black cloud over everything that you've ever done. (laughs) You feel like nothing that you've ever done is amount to anything. And you don't feel like that you even have what it takes to get up and go at it again. And man, he was like, how'd you know? How did you know? Right. And people say, is that a prophetic word? No. (laughs) Word of knowledge. (laughs) And so what it was, it was his kidneys. So now let me just show you how you find this kind of stuff in the Bible. So now there is a word reins, like the reins of a horse. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You look at the word reins in the Hebrew, guess what it is? Kidneys. Kidneys. Oh my. And so, you know, you'll see that you'll see the writer say, Lord, you know, prove me. Yeah. You know, prove my, prove my dedication to you. And, and prove my reins to mm-hmm. see if I'll be also. In other words, my Pro- kidneys, because kidneys. that's what affects my willpower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I found that the emotional connection mm-hmm. between the organs and mm-hmm. the emotions are the exact same in the Bible as they are in Chinese medicine, because that's where they got it. Wow. Sorry. That's wisdom. That's the wisdom to... to to get to the depth of what God put for all of us. But wasn't it, because I know you can read the faith based on people's face. So that probably gave you more even knowledge about this boy, what he's going through. Well, you know, it's kind of an interesting thing. Sometimes Mm -hmm. it might show up in their face more. Sometimes. Now, another thing I never tell people, I'm I'm telling you something I never tell people right here (laughs) is you, you know about what kind of body odor a person has, which organs are messed up. And so, you know, we were trained to observe what their eyes look like, you know, where's discoloration in their eyes, what's, you know, what, what's going on in their face, listen to the tone of their voice. But when you, when you would greet somebody, she either shake hands with them or hug them, yeah. but you're getting close enough to them that you can smell them. Oh my gosh. Yes, that's it. And so now here's another interesting thing. Mm -hmm. Body movement reveals a lot about which organs are dysfunctioning. And it reveals a lot about what your emotional issues are. So one of the things I used to do, Mm -hmm. you know, I I used to do counseling one day a week. I was a, you know, I have local congregation every Thursday. I'd spend, spend Thursdays counseling. But one of the things I would do, uh, I would always have people park in the parking lot mm-hmm. that, that I could see them coming mm-hmm. from the window in my office. 
Oh yeah. Because I, I wanted to see how they walked. Oh. <laughs> so if I, you know, usually oh, all kinds of husband and wife are never seldom ever going to walk the same. Now sometimes they will because of what their behavior behavior style is. So you know, you look out the window and you say you see that one of them is kind of walking with their feet pointed out. Mm -hmm. And then the other one, they're either walking more with their feet straight or just maybe a little bit pigeon toe. Uh -huh. Now, here's what we know. The person that is walking with their feet out is what we call a physical sexual. The person that's walking with their feet more in is more of, of, a, a, of a, what they call an emotional sexual. Now, okay. there's no right or wrong. Mm -hmm. And usually, you're always nearly going to have opposites. And so, so sometimes I would have them come and sit down and, and I, you know, I'd talk to them a few minutes, but I wouldn't even let them tell me anything about, about myself. I'd say, so let me, let me, does this ever happen in your home? Do you ever like, like when, when you're kind of mm -hmm. feeling like the relationship is stressed, do you put pressure on her to have sex? Mm -hmm. Oh, you can see both of them. They're like, how do you know this? So and uh <laughs> and so i would and they, you know, they go well sometimes let's like, say if it was the guy he might deny it and she would say you know that's what you do <laughs> <laughs> and you all you needed to do is to see him walking from the parking lot <laughs> and so i would ask her because i saw her walk in and she's a little more feet yeah. going straight so let me i said so let me ask you this mm -hmm. when when he's wanting to have stress you i mean sex mm -hmm. you're feeling pressured and i said Probably the first place you go to is that, see, he don't want to solve any problems. He just wants to have sex all the time, right? Mm -hmm. And she said, well, that's what it makes me feel like. I said, but, but you do know that's a judgment. And I'd, I'd teach her about how she's getting in judgment because she doesn't really understand what's going on. I say, so, but here, I said, let me ask you this. Do you, when there's conflict in your marriage, do you, are you the kind of person that says, you know what? We got to talk this through and we ain't, we'll never have sex again if we don't talk it through. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and she mm -hmm. said yeah i won't talk it through because i won't solve it and so <laughs> i'd look at him and say so you yeah. feel like that she's just cutting you off to punish you right <laughs> yeah and so then i would i would be able to say okay so here's what's really happening he thinks that if you all could reconnect physically mm -hmm. that then there would y'all would both be secure enough to work through this issue yes you think that if y'all could just talk it through, mm -hmm. that then you all could work this issue. And, and I said, and because she doesn't do it the way you do, and because <laughs> he doesn't, you know, do what you do, then y'all pass judgments about each other. And the real truth is what you feel like is being pressured, what you feel like is being punished. The real truth is you guys are passing judgments and you're never dealing with the real problem. You're never saying to that person, you know what? I realize you're, mm -hmm. I realize you're kind of having a need to be physically involved mm -hmm. and I don't, and I don't want you to think I'm, I'm rejecting you, but, but it would help me mm -hmm. before we could connect on that level. It would help me if we could just talk about a few things. And mm -hmm. I said, you can work. And it, I think we'd save marriages and it'd be like, it'd be like a, you know, a 30 minute session. I'm like, that's it. Well, do we need to come back? Not if you take my advice, start, you know. <laughs> and so all yeah. of these things are holistic concepts that says every part of you is connected to and to some degree is expressed wow. through some part of your body. This is just amazing. So once you know so much about the couple or anyone that comes for counsel to you, you look at them and you know, additionally, what they struggle with physically, what organs. So you can recognize what, if that organ is sick, then you know what emotions they struggle with. Yeah. So basically all they can say is yes or no. And they are amazed that you know all about them. Yeah, right? I, yeah that, see. <laughs> That's scary. You always want to keep people from having to pass a judgment yes. or justifying themselves. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's just either... Is this happening? Yes or no? Is this happening? Yes or no? And then you go to the bit. So the solution mm -hmm. is never in the Chinese medicine. Mm -hmm. The oh. solution is always in the Bible. In the Bible, of course. Mm -hmm. I, let me let me give you one other example. You you will you will love this one. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, this lady, you know, she went to to a charismatic church here in town. Of course, they would have probably kicked her out of church if they knew she was coming to my clinic. 
And uh, so well, she comes in and and she's and you know she's telling you know I'm, I'm doing an intake I'm getting information and she's sitting up on one of my you know tables you know we had these mm-hmm. tables that we would use for treatments mm-hmm. so she's sitting up there and so she's telling me what's going on and she's telling me how she has all these sleep problems insomnia what you know can't stay asleep da, 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 da. and so you know with insomnia insomnia is a symptom mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It, it is not a cause mm-hmm. and so then we use our type of uh diagnosis mm-hmm. to identify what the cause is yes so, so, so I always look at people's tongue. I'll take the pulse, look at the tongue. So mm-hmm. I sort of stick your tongue out. And so if you see a person mm-hmm. and their tongue mm-hmm. is more pointed and a little longer than, than many people, <laughs> then you know that that person has an eye behavior pattern. Now that's not good or bad. There's not, I mean, it's, it's not a right or wrong. And so if, if a person, and there's nothing wrong with it. And so, um, <laughs> yeah. uh, so she stuck out her tongue and sure enough, her tongue would reach almost down to her chin. And, uh, but here was the key thing. The tip of her tongue was, I mean, it was scarlet red. It, it looked like somebody, it looked like it was on fire, but oh. you know, about this much of the tip of her tongue. Mm-hmm. Well, the tip of your tongue represents your heart. And when there's red in on the tip of your tongue is what we would call heart fire. Oh. And, uh, and so one of the things we know about heart fire is people who have heart fire always have sleep problems. Now, not all sleep problems are caused by heart power, but I'm just saying this is this is one. But here's the thing that you know. People who have heart fire, they wake up during the night and they usually wake up be- after having sexual dreams. Oh, so, <laughs> so now you knew about that. <laughs> so I, you know, I you know, when I saw this, I thought, bless her heart. You know, she goes to a charismatic church, Ooh. you know, they're they're not as biblically based as they think they are. Everything is spooky. Everything's the devil. And then they drug her through deliverance. I don't even know how many times. Mm. Or nothing ever changed. So she, so I'm thinking, I'm thinking, man, she's been beat up over this. She <laughs> believes she's <laughs> demon possessed. Mm-hmm. So I got to be real careful how I share this with her because like, uh, it could just freak her out totally. Mm-hmm. So I kept asking her questions, trying to make her feel comfortable giving me honest answers. Well, she wasn't giving me honest answers because yeah. she was humiliated. Yes, and scared. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so, so finally, I just said, look, uh, I said, I'm going to share something with you that I've seen. I said, I've seen, I don't even know how many people right. dealing with what you're dealing with. Mm-hmm. And I said, most people that deal with this, you have a lot of shame. and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm making her feel comfortable. So I said, so I said, stick out your tongue. I held up a mirror. I said, you see that right there? We mm-hmm. call that heart fire because the tip of your tongue represents your heart. And I said, so people who have heart fire mm-hmm. tend to have a lot of sexual dreams. Man, I want to tell you something. She threw her, I don't know how she didn't bust her kneecaps. She threw herself off of that table onto the floor and just cried out of control. I mean, I, I didn't, I almost, it took me forever to console her and get her calmed down because because she thought, oh, no, one more person knows I'm demon possessed now. You know, what's going to happen now? So I finally got her calm, got her back up on the table. And I said, so here's the deal. Yeah. I said, so we're going to we're going to treat this heart fire. And I said, probably about two weeks, this is going to stop. And if it doesn't, then we'll figure out what we need to do next. Yeah. Sure enough, about two weeks. She wouldn't have these dreams anymore. So she so she calls me. Uh, she was going to cancel an appointment. I said, she said, you know, we got this fixed. I said, no, we don't. I said, we, we have the physiological problem fixed. I said, but we got to go to your heart mm-hmm. and what's happening between you and God. See, I never stopped with just solving a physical problem. Right. That was always the gateway mm-hmm. to get to the root issue. And she mm-hmm. said, well, what do you mean? I said, well, come in. I'll talk to you. Uh, uh, and you know, a lot of people, I wouldn't let them go to our counseling program until they came to our clinic. Mm-hmm. We get the physical problem out of the way that was contributing, mm-hmm. and then they could go in and solve, you know, the the real spiritual problem. And so she comes in. She says, "Well, she says, look, I'm not having dreams anymore. What, what else is there to deal with?" I said, "Okay, I'm gonna ask you some questions. They're gonna be kind of embarrassing." I said, "So you know, you can't have help the fact that you had sexual dreams that had nothing to do with your desires. That was all biological." I said, "But let me ask you this: When you woke up in the middle of the night after having a sexual dream," Mm-hmm. 
What'd you do? No. And she'd be like, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I said, either. She said, no, I, I don't understand what you're talking about. I said, yes, you understand. Oh my gosh. I said, did you get, did you masturbate? Oh my. Did you get up and start watching porn? And again, <laughs> she kind of unraveled. He fell on the floor again? And she fell on the floor, but she almost did. And so, <laughs> you know, she's like, how did you know? I said, listen, that's just what, that's just human. If you wake up and you have had a sexually stimulating dream mm -hmm. and maybe even have an orgasm in your sleep, you're going to do something when you wake up. Oh my God. And so, so <laughs> then I said, so, so, so what we got to deal with now is what was going on in your heart mm -hmm. that made you think that if you fed this problem, you'd get relief. That's really what she believes. She thought, you know, I'm, I'm on fire now sexually. I got to have some relief from this desire. So right. masturbation, mm -hmm. well, you know, so we were able to deal with the spiritual aspect of that and, and, and solve that problem, but, you know, by doing some put off, put on, you know, some biblical work with her. And so that's the way we would always do it. Usually people would come in physical, emotional problems or physiological problems. Wow. And we get them into the clinic mm -hmm. and we would remove that. And mm -hmm. once we remove that, then you could deal with what the real root problem was. Mm -hmm. uh, have you you've heard the phrase like uh, with drug addicts, like, you know, they got the monkey on their back? Mm -hmm. You ever heard that phrase? Yes. Well, so what we're doing there, see, the monkey on your back is a physiological craving. But the physiological craving is not the root of addiction. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So if I can get this monkey off of your back where you're not physiologically craving something, then we can sit down and talk and you're not going to lie to me. You're not going to try to cover it up. You're not going to be humiliated. And I'm telling you, we had a success rate of not only helping believers, but leading people to Jesus. Jesus, right. Because, because suddenly God was relevant and valuable to them. Yeah, this is so amazing. So we are like a construction, a network incredibly designed by god who is such a genius i always yeah. say that he put us oh my gosh I, I just can't imagine you know when i go to heaven i mean when i meet jesus i'm gonna say can i please see how you created us from nothing to human being i just want to see it those emotions how you put all these bloodstream and the, yeah. the cells it's just so amazing and then Question, do you think, because people claim that we all are connected somehow, we all people, what do you say about that? Well, in a certain sense, we are, but not in the sense that the new agers try to make it, you know what I mean? We are all, you know, I'm really reluctant to say what I'm about to say. Say it, say it, say it. <laughs> in the last 50 years, mm -hmm. We have science, not, you know, the church didn't figure that, well, actually some of the church already knew this, but science is discovering, and I always tell people, the scientists that are honest always eventually cannot refute what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. Science so, always eventually catches up with the Bible. Catches up with the Bible. Woohoo! Yes. So, <clears throat> one, of the, one of the most significant scientific discoveries in the last century was that the universe is not infinite mm -hmm. see it is like it was like it was an occult belief that the universe was eternal and that it had been here forever and mm -hmm. that it would be here forever mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and listen you you can't even get this in in college university level science classes they don't want to talk about this because this this disproves almost every lie we have been told our whole life. Mm -hmm. So, if the universe is not infinite, infinite, then it had to have a beginning, and it had to have an end. Wow! So now you can't just kind of blow people off and just say, "Well, you know, we can't explain that because it's it's been here forever." Mm -hmm. Oh no! Mm -hmm. Now you got to come up with real answers for the beginning and the end. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I, I had a, I know scientists that know what I'm about to say, but I also know a lot of scientists that don't know this and will get kind of argumentative about it. Mm -hmm. One of the most probably frightening thing to a lot of scientists 
we realize now that the speed of light is slowing down very minutely, but it's slowing down. Now, I'm, I'm going to give you about four or five factors here that changes everything. And if you know enough of the word of God, you go, well, oh, well, wait a minute. You know, I should have known that all along because it's in the word of God. I may not have recognized it, but it was there. Wow. So, uh, so <clears throat> we realize, you know, that, like I say, that light is in fact slowing down. We realize that the universe is not infinite, infinite. It had a beginning. Mm -hmm. It had an end. Uh, <clears throat> we, Max Planck, back in 1927, I believe it was, when he won the Nobel Peace Prize for, um, it, it, it's a, a quantum physics. Oh, okay. So in his speech about quantum physics, oh. he's, and I'm just lifting out a, a small part of it. Okay. He says, you know, up until now, we believe that we were observing mm -hmm. the universe. He said, but now, you know, with the advent of quantum science, we realize we are not mm -hmm. observing what's happening in the universe, mm -hmm. that we are at a, we are involved in an interplay with everything that's happening in the universe because we are changing everything in the universe by observing it and by having beliefs about it. And so suddenly the authority to speak in this world and make things happen, yeah. scientifically proven. My gosh. I mean, that, that, that gets, man, that takes you, that takes you to places. I, you can spend a, your life preaching and teaching about that. Yeah, yeah, yes. But we know that this time and measurement is so different in space than on earth. Well, and see, that's another thing uh, 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 Einstein, you know, he grappled with this for years after he, you know, he came out with his first, yeah. uh, 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 theory of, of, did he come out with special relativity or just general relativity first? I can't, I can't remember. Uh, I believe general. Okay. Okay. So he comes out with his theory of re relativity, but man, he was tormented over the fact that he, even though he had discovered something that was so phenomenal. Yeah. He knew that that was just barely the tip of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. So now, you know, I've said this my whole life. I tell you, back in the 70s and the 80s, I mean, I had people stand up in congregations and fuss with me. Mm -hmm. And here's, here's one of the things I've always said. Time yes. is not real. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Time is an observable, yes. measurable uh, uh, factor. Mm -hmm that can that only exists mm -hmm. in our experience within creation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so so we're experiencing time but it doesn't mean the way we're experiencing it is the way it really is mm -hmm. now the, the the experiments that were done you know we have two atomic clocks mm -hmm. and, uh, and and uh, you know one of them you know there are different altitudes mm -hmm. and these atomic clocks i mean i'm telling you, they are accurate within something like a you know a millionth of a second or something like that every, every so many years mm -hmm. well what's interesting if you if you were to measure an hour so, so, uh, so if you're down here you're down here closest to it you measure an hour and you you know you look at this go, you're going by this clock down here and it was okay you've been doing this exercise for an hour mm -hmm. But if at the same time that you started measuring it by this clock, it was measured by this clock at a different altitude, mm -hmm. it'd be like, no, you've been doing this for an hour and so many seconds. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, wait a minute, then one, which one of these clocks are right or wrong? They're right. both right mm -hmm. because time is, is, no matter how it's experienced, mm -hmm. is actually measured differently based on where you are when you measure it. Well, I, I don't want to bring you down to earth because uh, it's so good, but people say that each body has different time. We have our clock. You know, I'm not sure what they mean by that. If I knew what, if I knew what they really meant. Biological that. clock that we function different. For instance, the sleep, sleeping patterns, everyone has different. That's why people struggle. They are up at nights. They want to sleep at daytime. Well, that's, called, that's called circadian rhythm. 
Okay, circadian rhythm. Cir circadian rhythm, C-I-R-C-A-D-I-U-M, I think. And they say that it's de it dependent uh, and connected with space as well. Have well, you circadian rhythm is this. See, mm -hmm. where you are standing on planet Earth in relationship to where the sun is, so, okay, changes mm -hmm. the magnetic effect and the uh, gravitational effect yes. of your experience. And so the your body, the, yes. this 24 hour circadian rhythm, like for example, mm -hmm. you know, at, uh, at three o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. wherever you are, because it's based on where you are on the earth, three yes. o'clock in the morning, your lungs become more active. Mm -hmm. And that's then right. about five o'clock in the morning, your large intestines become more active. Okay. And that's why people usually, if you're healthy, mm -hmm. you will have a bowel movement every morning, somewhere between, should be somewhere between three and seven. Wow. <laughs> then from, you know, th so then from seven o'clock until yes. nine o'clock, mm -hmm. your stomach becomes energized. If we don't work in harmony with that biological no. clock or whatever you call it, that's when we get sick. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that, 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 you know, people who are working on night shift and, and uh, are people who stay up too late to like, for, for example, from 11 o'clock yes. until three o'clock is when your liver and gallbladder become oh. activated. Wow. The, one of the worst ongoing things you can do for your health mm -hmm. is not to be in bed with your eyes shut by 11 o'clock. Oh, talk about because, it. Because mm -hmm. your liver affects your eyes and your eyes affect your liver. Mm -hmm. And so, but so from, so from three until, uh, I mean, uh, uh, 11 until, until three, mm -hmm. then this is when your liver is filtering your blood okay, and, and getting, you know, getting all the toxins out of your system. So if you're not asleep then, yes. or if you eat too late, mm -hmm. then your blood doesn't get filtered. Wow. Okay. Okay. Wow. So all of these things mm -hmm. kind of come back to, uh, these are things that we know scientifically. Yes. But these are also things that we knew biblically before we knew it scientifically. And mm -hmm. these are also things that Chinese medicine teaches that are in direct harmony and correlation to the Bible. Now, that doesn't mean, again, that doesn't mean I understand God through, through mm -hmm. Chinese philosophy. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that I believe everything in, in Chinese science. I have to know the Bible good enough to go and say, oh, no, 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 no. I know they're saying this, but this can't be real. This and that's the key. That's the key word that you spoke. We yeah. have to be have foundation, absolute foundation in the Bible if we want to dip into another medicine or culture or knowledge. Right. Otherwise, we're going to get lost. How many Christian believers? I want to underline. I, I see so many Christians that, yes. you know, they don't know the Bible good enough and they try to jump off into some of this stuff. And, and the next time you see them, they're in the new age. You know what I mean, because talk about it. Majority yeah. of Christians, that's how we lost them. That's By the way, let me throw this out before I get out. I know we've been on a lofty conversation. I mean, this is a very lofty conversation that <laughs> I'm telling you, you can, you can spend the rest of your life studying and researching what we've talked about so far. Absolutely. Okay. So here's the mind blower. I mean, this is the old mind blower. And this is where you understand a particular dynamic of faith. Mm -hmm. See, anything God says to us, that is ours, mm -hmm. it's got to work inside of this universe yes. and inside of this realm, our galaxy, and, and inside of our planet. In other words, it's got to work here. No matter how spiritual it is, it has to work in, in this environment because this is where we live. Mm -hmm. So if I, if I really do know the mm -hmm. scientific and the biblical concept of what the universe is all about, Mm -hmm. and all kinds of things get easy all right so here's the deal let's say I'm, let me use this example so so let's say that you've got a television screen mm -hmm. set up and in this television screen let's say it's got a picture of what a healthy heart looks like a healthy liver looks like you know mm -hmm. every organ in your body every bone mm -hmm. in your body mm -hmm. and so 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 let's say that uh, uh okay you know, we got technology to a place where it says, you know what, I'm having some liver problems. So you just click on there and a liver comes up. 
<laughs> and you're looking at a healthy liver yeah. and because now you're seeing what a healthy liver looks like yes your liver goes oh that's what i'm supposed to look like and it goes oh, okay and it gets well so i'm just making all that up but yeah. but just kind of thinking about how that thing everything has to work within within this vi environment so here's what is probably true mm -hmm. and the most advanced scientific research in the world says this and because of this thing that science has ultimately discovered uh you start looking there's a lot of scriptures that scientists over the years said that can't happen that is that is impossible to happen for uh mm -hmm. for god to roll up the heavens or you know mm -hmm. and they would say well, that, that, that's stupid <laughs> now we know because science has discovered how and why that's true mm -hmm. There's a high probability that all, everything in creation, that our entire universe is actually a digital representation and that we, we are real, but the world that we live in is actually a digital representation. This is really not the reality we think it is. So if it's a digital representation, I start to understand, oh, well, that's why I am interactive with everything in this universe because it's all digital. And it's like having that remote control that I can just flip, flip on and look at a liver. So when I'm using faith, see, when God says you can do this, he doesn't explain every scientific reason because really the science doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. What matters is what he says. He created us. We believe in our heart and we believe that that we can do these things because of what Jesus did in his death, burial, and resurrection. So we realize we are in this kind of a model or this movie about a world, mm -hmm. which means that we can alter this to be anything we want it to be based on the word of God, because God gave us instruction for how this all works. Wow. Now it's going to take, listen, I understand you. Those of you that got a million questions, you're going to get most of the answers yourself because this stuff gets into so much scientific stuff that you're, you know, you're going to have to find good sources to get this information because most of this stuff isn't even taught in colleges yet. No way. Wow. We have a lot to think about. Yes, I have a lot of questions, but I'm going to hold them. You're right. Dr. Jim, uh, there was a one question. Maybe I will just jump to a specific question, if that's okay, uh, sure. from our previous uh, session. Um, uh, Chelsea, she asked, as far as food choices, what do you think makes the biggest difference in reversing damage done as a result of eating junk food? Uh, eating organic, cutting out grains, including uh, sugar, white potatoes, rice, or something else. You know, um, I'm not saying that this is an exact priority list, but I'm saying it's pretty close. Mm -hmm. First of all, when I say clean food, I talk about clean food. I'm, not, I, I'm talking about two kinds of clean food. Mm -hmm. There are the clean foods that God says are clean. Mm -hmm. And those are the only things that I eat. Mm -hmm. I don't eat unclean food. I haven't eaten unclean food in, in 50 years, probably. Or, or really more like 48 years. Yes. And uh, <clears throat> so I do not want to disrupt the way my body is supposed to function mm -hmm. by putting these foods in here mm -hmm. that are not compatible with how I was created. Mm -hmm. uh, but also the fact that these are all scavengers. Mm -hmm. And this means that I'm eating the pollution that that they ate mm -hmm. you, know, you know the the dead rotten carcasses of of yeah. other animals all that kind of stuff but then also then it needs to be chem chemically clean i need to make sure that, that that my food does not have poisons and toxins on it. so that that's you know you start with what you're gonna put in gotta be clean yes and those are the three categories you know mm -hmm. the clean food in general um mm -hmm. not you know not scavengers but they don't have toxins Okay. I mean, this is a list. No, there's a list here. If you, if you want to, if you want a full answer of this, yes, a list. yes, yes, please, please. So then that would mean we need to start understanding what organic food really is. Now, I'm telling you, you go to the grocery store and buy something that says organic, that don't mean nothing. <sighs> oh, yeah. you, you okay. know, 
about the, about the best way to get organic food is to grow it yourself. You know, mm-hmm. Brenda and I have a small garden mm-hmm. and raised beds mm-hmm. that that actually grows enough vegetables that we eat for us and all of our kids. Mm-hmm. It's very small. It's not, it's not very big. Pretty, pretty, pretty easy to do. Yes. Uh, so organic. And see, most people think organic is just the absence of chemicals. Mm-hmm. No. If, in other words, there may have never been a, a bug spray sprayed on your food, but what kind of fertilizer was grown in? Mm -hmm. natural you know Mm -hmm. so you got to learn what organic food is so get organic food uh get water that is um i distill all my water distill i don't i don't drink anything out of a water pipe because it's nasty it's poisonous uh actually they have so many hormones so many people flush their drugs down the toilets Mm -hmm. that everybody in america when they drink water, they're, they're usually drinking something that's going to mess up the hormones, going to poison them on some level. It's going to have psychotic drugs in it, you know, hallucinogenics, all those kinds of stuff. So I want my food, my water clean yes. and organic. Okay. Now, the diet in general that I think is m- most compatible with the human body, the way God created us, is what they call the keto diet. Mm-hmm. Now, see, you're, a lot of your New Agers and even a lot of your Christians that don't know any better, they mm-hmm. say, oh, no, we're supposed to be vegetarians because that's how God created us. Wait a minute. You forget that there was the fall of man. And from that time forward, the way our environment changed, we have to eat meat or our cells are never very healthy. Mm-hmm. But, you, uh, but, you, but you eat clean meat, you know? Yes. Now, the keto diet... People think that the ketogenic diet mm-hmm. is, um, is a high protein diet. It's really not. And if you eat that way, it's not going to work well for you. The ketogenic diet is low, no starches. You know, I don't, I don't eat sugar. I don't eat flour. I don't eat anything that's been bleached white because there's no nutrition in it. And it will jack your sugar up so high that your body has to kick in extra insulin. And see, that's why so many Americans are diabetic. Yes, 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 yes. So no sugar, no flour, nothing that's been bleached, nothing, nothing that's white. And, you know, Brenda, you know, she had to, t- she's a country girl. She had to totally learn how, how to cook the foods that we love yeah. differently. Wow. And so, you, you know, the, the wisdom is when you go to the, go to the grocery here in America, mm-hmm. get all of your food from what's around the wall. Because that's where that's where all of your meat is. That's where your vegetables are that are raw. But once you get away from the walls, you get in where cans are. And once you get into canned goods, you're into chemicals, 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 chemicals. Yes. The uh, the ketogenic diet uh, is a high fat, high healthy fat. Mm-hmm. And I, I, that's what you ate when you were a baby. If you breastfed, uh, you know your mother's milk is almost totally fat. Hmm. And, and the worst thing that happens to babies is to feed them baby food because we're taking them off of this fat, yeah. which is what, what fat turns into fuel faster than anything you put in your body. You digest it very fast and it's very clean. Hmm. And so you, you get a baby just as quick as you, as you wean them, then you start putting them on cereals that are all starch, which means they're all sugar. You know, hmm. starch and sugar are just almost one of the same thing. So the problem then is that, uh, is that our body will adapt. And so when you start feeding babies all of this starch, then what happens is they lose their capacity to actually uh, properly digest and assimilate fats, which is your main fuel, mm-hmm. and it adapts and it starts trying to create fuel from starches and sugars. And so, so now, the, and, and starches and sugars burn really fast. Like I said, they push your insulin up real high. Insulin so high. your insulin goes up when you eat it, which makes you tired, makes you sleepy. So about mm-hmm. two hour, every two hours, you're, you're, you are tired, you're sleepy, and you're craving something. Yeah. So, so you you're like going to get caffeine, you're going to get something, or more sugar, more starch. So a good ketogenic diet, good clean water, good clean food. Now... I'm not going to go any farther on the list because really if people will do a little bit of research. They can figure this out, but, but let's look at it this way. 
the children of Israel, when, when they came into the promised land, there was not one sick person among them. Now, we try to make that a big supernatural thing, but stop and think. Number one, they walked every single day. Now, I, I know you're going to especially hate this one. Walking is probably 10 times better for you than running. Mm -hmm. Running, uh, you know, running hurts your joints, it hurts your back, hurts your knees. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually, all studies show that people who run, the minute they stop running, they start gaining weight. Because, because it does it running does not actually build up muscle and that's what you want to do you want to build up muscle mm -hmm. because you know muscle is going to burn calories muscle is going to give you the strength to you know to do all this stuff so okay. um so uh, uh walk more than you run you know, if you if just have to run do it on a mini trampoline or something like that so that you just don't crush your joints because i'm telling you people who jog who start out jogging you know when they're teenagers uh, they most of them have crippling arthritis by the time they're in their late twenties, mm -hmm. and so none of it, none of us want that. So, um, uh, but some of, so the children of Israel they walk they every day. Okay. Mm -hmm. Second thing is they breathe fresh air. Mm -hmm. You can put you know if you're in places highly polluted, put pl put plants in your house. Yes. And there are certain kind of plants uh, that tend to create more oxygen than other kind of mm -hmm. plants. So put plants in us. So they walked every day. They breathe fresh air. They uh, they drink clean water. Mm -hmm. They uh, 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 they didn't eat unclean foods. Mm -hmm. and, you know, this there's just four or five things that they did. Mm -hmm. But that's probably and also by living in harmony with God. And see again, the commandments did not get God to do something for you. Remember, we talked about how a commandment yeah. is a prescription. Mm -hmm. So God says, here, I got a prescription for you. Stay at peace. Mm -hmm. You know, forgive people. Walk in love. Mm -hmm. And so emotionally, people who stay in peace, their body works like it's supposed to. People who live in stress, their hormones go out of way, everything goes wrong. Mm -hmm. So it's not that complicated. And the great thing about keto is everybody I have ever talked with that got on a ketogenic program, in about two weeks, all of their sugar cravings were gone. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when I, when I went on keto, uh, and of course, I, I, you know, I've ne never been a big sweet eater. I've always, I've taken care of myself my whole, whole adult life. Mm -hmm. But I dropped two shirt sizes in just, I don't know, just maybe a month or maybe 60 days or something mm -hmm. like that. I dropped two shirt sizes, two pant sizes, mm -hmm. and your energy level, Yes, and your growth hormone is going. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. That means you renew your strength and yep. youth. You actually Absolutely. are getting younger. That's why we were talking at last session that some 40 year old people my age, they act like 60 and yep. people who eat right, mm -hmm, it's backwards. Well, you know, I'm 71 years old. Right. And when you consider what all I've been through, you know, mm -hmm. you know, coming into this world with with co uh, congenital problems, mm -hmm. you know, uh, actually, I'm I'm more functional than most fifty year olds that I meet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Sometimes working with you, let me tell people, I cannot keep up <laughs> with <laughs> work that you do. <laughs> well, you, you do better than anybody that ever, that ever tried to keep up with me. Let me tell you that. But I have to, yeah, adjust my keto diet. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. Well, that's you know all. What? Mm -hmm. We've given them a lot of information. Now, we'll go as long as you want to go. I just, I just, I'm just all right going a little longer or, or stopping. No, 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 no. That's, that's perfect. You're right. Maybe let's stop, even though I hope that this session will birth another question. Okay. You spoke so much. I feel a little bad about uh, taking you down from the space because it was so good. So, next session, I would like to pick up on this. If you don't mind about the the whole universe and then in if it's infinite, I'm sorry, infinite uni universe and the halogen, did I say right? Uh, uh, no, 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 no. You said that we are. Help me out. How could I forget? Oh, we are a di we are a digital. digital. Yeah, and and really, what they're understanding now, as you were going to get into, uh, what what's the word? Uh, um, Quantum physics. Not halogen. It starts with an H. Uh, uh, Hal halogen. 
Uh, no, that's not the word. It's all, that's almost the word. I I'm sorry. I'm just having a blank right here. But but we can talk a little bit about that because even understanding that mm -hmm. brings us into understanding. Mm -hmm. That takes us into understanding dimensions, holographic. Holographic. Thank you so much. I'm going to so write it down. Mm -hmm. A holograph, when you understand what a, what a holograph is, mm -hmm. and then you start saying, well, wait a minute, our whole universe is a digital holographic simulation man that changes everything about yeah. understanding how simple miracles and faith is and, and that, then that gets you into dimensions yeah which man that takes you into a whole other world but don't get all you know don't get all messed up i mean we touched on some incredibly lofty stuff today don't get all hung up on that mm -hmm. uh to get what you can out of it but go back to the practical stuff if you take all that high and lofty stuff and you don't make it practical, then you've wasted my time and your time. Exactly. And always come back to the cross because yep. it's about the cross. Absolutely. You, Jim. This was awesome. Well, thank you. I enjoyed doing it. Absolutely. Thank you, everyone. And we are waiting on your comments, your yep. letters, whatever, right down to me. I always include my address and drjimrichards.com email address. So write to us. Thank you. Well, you know, I won't be able to understand them if they send me something in Polish. So, so they, they need to send it to you. Okay. And then you can oh, filter okay. the questions and decide where we go next. Very good. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.